All right, here we find ourselves once more at the system dashboard. Now what I want to do is I want to create tenants, but before I do that, what I want to do is I want to discuss the fact that we already inherit three tenants in the infrastructure. We can see here that we have a tenant named common, which is going to be for resources that I want to share between other tenants. So Cisco give me a place to be able to place those whereby I can actually set these up if they're common to all devices. The infrastructure tenant is the tenant that contains the networking and the policies that govern the behavior of the fabric itself. Remember, we created that infrastructure VLAN that we created VLAN 4 in the bootstrap process. Well, also keep in mind that we have to be able to manage these devices, and these devices have IP addresses, we have interconnectivity, so we have to have forwarding and networking resources and policies that govern the behavior of those endpoints, nodes, and devices. So what we have is we have a tenant for management. These are three tenants that we inherit. We cannot delete them, and they are very, very important. Sometimes you may not use the common. We won't be using the common for much in our class, uh, but the, keep in mind that it is there. Now what I want to do is I want to create a tenant. So what I want to create is I'm going to create a tenant called TN Demo. Now, remember, the tenant that I create is going to be a container. It's an isolation logical construct that allows me to be able to define my networking functionality and my policies governing the behavior of that functionality and keep it separate and isolated from other tenants inside the system. And you'll see here, immediately, it gives me the capability of being able to create a VRF. Now, a VRF in the terms of ACI is first of all defined within the tenant. It's also sometimes like I said referred to as a context or a private layer 3 network but because ACI calls it a VRF that's what I'm going to set it up. But if, Notice here if you put your mouse here it says a name for the network context. That's why it's also sometimes called context. But the virtual routing and forwarding instance I'm going to go ahead and make it now. I could make it later but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say VRF demo. And that's what I'm going to call it. And then we'll see that I have the capability of it have, telling it to take me to this tenant to do my configuration. Because remember, the, I need to configure the rest of these resources. So by hitting submit, what I'm going to do is create the tenant. And then it's going to take me directly to the tenant. And we're going to see I'm going to have an entire series of options. Now, I absolutely love the graphical representation here. I can see that I'm inside tenant demo. And inside of tenant demo, I have a virtual routing and forwarding instance called demo. And I also see that I have networking capability where I can define bridge domains, VRFs, I also have the capability of being able to, to decide how I'm going to communicate to external layer 2 networks, external layer 3 networks, and whether or not I want to run dot one Q, Q, and Q tunnels. Notice here I also have the capability of defining contracts, policies, and services. Now, I called out two specific elements when you create a tenant. I said you created a networking container, which is that right there, and you create an a policy container and the one that I said that we were going to be concerned with is going to be the application profile container. It's going to be inside of the application profile container if I hit the down arrow here that you're going to see that I have no functionality until I actually make one. So we made the container. We didn't inherit anything in that process. There's no default policy. There's nothing. In fact it doesn't even exist. So like I said we get these two containers. We get others. Contracts are a separate container, but we'll talk about those here in a moment. But the thing that we do inherit is, is the moment that we created the networking, we can see here I have that VRF that I created. And inside of that VRF, we see we have the policies and the configurations that are going to govern the behavior of that VRF. But right now, we're just taking everything at its default value. Now, the next part of this is going to be that I'm going to want to create bridge domains. Now remember we said a bridge domain is a layer 2 forwarding construct. That's really and truly all it is. Think of it as a broadcast domain. It's also a container. It's a container for subnets, one or more subnets. But keep in mind that a bridge domain is not a VLAN. 
and also it exists inside of the VRFs that I define. I can have more than one bridge domain in a VRF. I could have more than one VRF and each one of those could have unique bridge domains inside of the same tenant. So just keep in mind I'm not restricted to just having one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a bridge domain. Notice I don't have one. So I'll right click here and I'm going to say create a bridge domain. Now when it asks me about the creation of this bridge domain, it's going to give me a number of options. First of all, I'm going to be tasked to name it. I'm just going to say bridge domain demo. Now we'll see here I've got, I can assign it an alias, I can give it a description. So I'll just say uh, walk through bridge domain. But you'll see I actually define what VRF it's going to exist in. Because remember, bridge domains are contained inside of virtual routing and forwarding instances. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say it's going to exist inside of the VRF bridge domain. Now we are going to govern, remember, it's a layer 2 forwarding construct. Well how am I going to forward? Well if I hit the down arrow here I can use the optimized method or I could use the custom. Now the question is, is what is optimized? Well, I can't see that unless I hit custom, and then what it's going to do is it's going to give me the defaults and then I can modify from the defaults. So it's saying layer 2 unicast traffic is going to be hardware proxy forwarded. Sometimes that means I need to actually modify that, and if I modify it, I may actually uh, go through, I'm on the wrong one here, go through and say that I may want to actually FUD the traffic. So what this is saying is, is by default, I'm not going to flood unknown unicast traffic. But I will, by default, flood layer 3, unknown, multicast traffic. As we go through here, multicast destination flooding or multi-destination flooding is going to be flooded with inside the bridge domain. Do I want to flood ARPs? So these are all questions that I need to basically decide or be told early on if this is going to be something that I want to be able to set up. Now, next, I'm going to move to layer 3 configurations. So if I hit next, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me, how do I want to function? So do I want to have unicast routing enabled? Notice it's on by default. So in other words, it's inside of a layer 3 forwarding construct. Do I want to use that layer 3 forwarding construct to send information out of this bridge domain? Do I want to support ARP flooding? I can check here and say yes. Notice the bridge domain is configured to have a MAC address. And this is its MAC address. All right, virtual MAC addresses, I could configure them. And notice I said that bridge domains are actually containers for subnets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a subnet. I'll come over here and since I'm going to be in lab uh, 1, I'll create 10.1 and I'll say .1.254 slash 24. Now what this actually did is it's creating the network 10.1.1.254 but it's also, I'm sorry, 10.1.1.0 slash 24 but it's also creating a an SVI, a switched virtual interface. So basically any traffic that wants to leave this Ethernet segment is actually going to be sent to this IP address as the gateway of last resort. And it's also going to be interesting to note that this is going to be referred to as a pervasive SVI or a pervasive gateway, which means wherever this tenant is applied, i.e. to any leaf in my ACI fabric, this gateway is going to appear on that leaf. And it's called an anycast gateway or it's called a pervasive gateway because it's going to actually reside on more than one device. So when we look at how we do the implementation here, I have the capability of being able to say, do I want to, it to be private to this virtual routing and forwarding instance? I'm going to say yes, because we're not going to allow this, v, this particular network to be used anywhere else. So as we go through and look at the rest of the configuration here, there are other values that we can play with. And what we're going to do is we are going to basically just take the defaults. So I'll say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create three subnets inside this bridge domain. So the point here is going to be 10.1. I'll use 11.254 slash 24. I'll take the defaults. And then I'm going to create 111. So 10.1.111.254 slash 24. 
and I will take the defaults. So basically you can see here that I'm creating those subnets but at the same time I'm actually creating gateway addresses to get to, to be able to send traffic out of these subnets and basically what's going to end up happening as a result of this is I'm going to use the layer 3 construct the VRF itself to forward information. So at this juncture all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit and apply next and it's going to ask me do I want any monitoring first top security policies all outside the scope of our class so all I'm going to do is hit finish. Now the moment that this gets implemented notice now I have a bridge domain and that bridge domain if I click down on it you're going to see the subnets that I have actually configured and set up. Now I want to look at this graphically so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all the way up to the top for networking. And what you're going to see is, is now I have the VRF and I have the bridge domain all being graphically represented. Now what's missing here is the definition of and the assignment of endpoint groups. We now have built everything in the networking configuration. So ultimately what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to be able to go to the right side of the tenant configuration where I dictated policy and what I want to do is I want to create an application profile because in <clears throat> the ACI I'm going to assign endpoint groups to these network resources where in say for instance a virtual device context I would actually assign interfaces so we're going to see how everything is going to come together holistically but before we do that I want to have a conversation on the blackboard about endpoints and endpoint groups and how things are going to need to be defined ultimately. So once that's being done, what we'll do is we'll wrap up the discussion for the tenant and then we'll move into, after the demo obviously, we'll move into the creation of our domains. So with that being said, I'm Terry Vinson and I'll see you guys in the next video.